Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. If you've been here a while, you know that I've been diving back into Lightroom and exploring kind of all the new features and, you know, new. Some of these have been around for a little while, but if you saw that video, you'll know that I took about a two-year absence from really using Lightroom. So I'm in a little bit of a catch-up mode in terms of how I'm using it and what all the features are that have been included since that time. And I got to say, there's a lot of them. Uh, I mean, it's come a really long way and, you know, it's an incredibly powerful uh, editor and it has been really for a long time, but they're doing things that I really didn't really, I guess, expect them to do. Uh, one of which is embracing AI and, uh, you know, doing just interesting stuff, frankly. Uh, it's just become incredibly capable. Not that it wasn't capable before. It's been a great editor for a long time, but I felt like they weren't innovating that much for a while. Well, they certainly have uh, caught up and even jumped ahead in some cases. And what I wanted to do in this video is take a look at their AI-based noise reduction. It's really fantastic. And I wanted to do a comparison between that and the Topaz noise reduction. Now, it's not a detailed comparison. It's just kind of a, uh, you know, one side by side and just making some observations. So it's not a true deep dive on either one. But I wanted to talk about this AI noise reduction in Lightroom because I really think it changes the game in a lot of ways because... So many people use Lightroom as a catalog and as their base editor, including, that's what I used to do. I don't really use it as a catalog anymore, but a lot of people use it as a catalog and then they'll go to various plugins like Topaz and come back and do stuff. But I think the days of needing to do that, in some cases, are getting fewer and fewer, especially in the case of noise reduction. Let's take a look here. I've got this photo that I shot in Iceland. And as you can see on this right-hand side, it's ISO 2000, lower light at Kirkefell. Uh, oops, double click there. Um, if you take a look, I mean, you can see there's a fair amount of noise and that's the waterfall, you know, long exposure. This was 10 seconds uh, in lower light. We've got noise in the sky, noise in the landscape, all that stuff. So in the old days, like I said, I would go to various plugins like Topaz Denoise. Now they're on Photo AI now, which is a combined product, but still I would go to Topaz Denoise to do denoising and then come back to Lightroom for editing and things like that. But I don't have to do that anymore because you've got the capability to just pop in to um, the develop module, which I'm going to now. And then over here on detail, you can see I've done nothing to the photo because all these uh, are shaded. If they were white, that would indicate that I've done something, but I haven't. So I'm going to click into detail and you got in here and it says noise reduction, denoise. It's reduced noise with AI and it will be saved as a new DNG. A thing to note here is this is only available on RAW files. So this is a RAW file. It's shot with my Sony camera. You click Denoise and it comes up and it gives you a preview window, which is really fantastic, except that the piece of the photo that it's previewing isn't useful to me necessarily. So you can move around. You can just click and drag. Or what's easier for me is I like to just click that little uh, magnifying glass that has a minus, which is basically meaning backup. One click, I've now got the full photo, and now I can click over here and see this waterfall, which is really what I want to see where that water is hitting the rock. And there's the preview window, and it shows you what it looks like once it's enhanced, that is, once the noise has been removed. Honestly, it looks fantastic, and I'm going to show you zoomed in uh, in a moment. Uh, Denoise is, is clicked. It defaults to 100. You can, of course, adjust that slider if you'd like to. And it says estimated times about two minutes, and it'll stack this with the original. Um, I leave the stack on. I find that the time isn't that accurate. It's more like probably three minutes in this case, but you know, it's uh, it's quicker than other products. And so uh, I would just click enhance and it would do that. Now I've already done it, so I'm not gonna click enhance here. I'm just gonna click cancel. And I'm gonna zoom in on this waterfall because I wanna take a look at that. And this is again, ISO 2000 lower light. It was after dark as you can see. So I had to bump up the ISO to get a decent exposure and it needs some work. And the first thing I would like to do is reduce the noise. So I did that and I go over to this photo and here it is with the noise reduced. Now, if uh, I'm going to zoom in further on this rock because I think it's, uh, oops, uh, I think it's just really interesting here what uh, what this looks like. So maybe not quite that far. Maybe something about like that. Let me compare that to this other one. If you take a look at it, there it is beforehand. I mean, the definition on the rock really not very good at all. And this is a full frame Sony camera, and lots of noise. I mean, it's just all over the place. And in fact close up, it might actually be hard to distinguish what that is. But after the denoise happens, I mean, it, there's more definition of the rock and the water looks fantastic. I mean, there's no noise really anywhere. I think it's done an incredible job. And so to, to kind of move around the photo, I go up here and you look at the sky. I mean, the sky looks fantastic. 
I mean, the landscape looks good, but if you look at that and compare it to that, I mean, honestly, just a massive, massive difference. And that's why I'm so excited about this because I think it does change the game. And I think it's a, a huge benefit to people that are using uh, Lightroom because there's a lot of you. Uh, and you may not necessarily need to spend the money on various plugins these days to go do that kind of stuff. So having said that, I've also got a photo here. And this is just something I took in my office a while ago. But this time, I'm going to go over to Library Module and show you. If you look here, ISO 25600, which I absolutely did not need to do because there's adequate light. This was just in my office one afternoon. I set it on a table and took a photo, but if you look at it, ISO 25,600, so when you zoom in, I'm going to back out. That's too much of a zoom, but if, uh, let's say you go to something like that there, uh, maybe I'll get a little bit closer. How about that? Um, if you look at that, quite a bit of noise. Uh, it's distracting. I don't like it. I've never really been one to like noise. I've, I pretty much take it out, even though I'd probably never shoot at ISO 25,600. I did it here just so I could test denoising, and there's a lot of noise. But run it through Lightroom uh, denoising with the AI, and then you can look at this. I mean, look at the difference there. And there it is before. I mean, just massive, massive difference. And honestly, you know, one of the things about noise reduction is, of course, it's smoothing things out. And I shot this at f5.6, and I was focused here on the edge of this lens on this old video camera. But if you look at it, I mean, it looks like I didn't lose a ton of detail. And in fact, because the noise has gone so well, the text is actually more legible to me. It's easier to read Oops, uh, than it was there, right? Where it seems uh, a bit obscured behind all the noise. And so having done that, the other thing I wanted to do is run it through Topaz Photo AI, which is a great product. Uh, and it's now an all-in-one combined product. So it's got the enlargement and it's also got the sharpening in addition to the denoise. And so it's not an exact comparison, I just wanted to point out that this is the Lightroom denoise, which I think honestly looks fantastic. And if I click over, here's the Topaz denoise. Now, Topaz looks a little crisper around these edges. It looks, in fact, really sharp there, which I think looks nice. And I just ran the default settings in Topaz. So again, this is not a true head-to-head -head comparison. I'm just making a point that you can get great results with uh, Topaz Photo AI. There's no disputing that. But if you compare that to that, is it worth the money to you to go buy this $150, $200 add-on? And yes, it's got other things in it, sharpening and enlargement. But depending on whether you need those or not, does the noise reduction look any better? I mean, there it is in Lightroom and there it is in Topaz. I don't know that it really looks any better. And in fact, I might in some regard actually think, I'm going to look down here at Medallion. I actually think that the noise reduction in Lightroom is at least as good and maybe slightly better to be honest like if you look at this piece right here it looks really smooth it's out of focus because of how i shot it but it looks really smooth and if you look here i can see more noise there and same up here right here uh, in this little thing next to that dial if you look there and compare it to this i think it looks smoother in other words less noisy in lightroom than it does in topaz so again lightroom and topaz topaz Lightroom. Honestly, uh, the bigger difference to me or the biggest difference is that the edge here, I think it's plenty sharp in Lightroom to be fair, but it looks a little bit crisper there. It actually might be slightly over sharpened. And again, there are settings differences that you can adjust in Topaz Photo AI. And again, I'm not trying to pick on the product. I'm just pointing out the fact that you may not need it because you're spending $10 a month on the Adobe photography plan, like pretty much all of us. And in doing so, you get this amazing world-class noise reduction that I think is on par and maybe better in some cases than what I, I would say is probably arguably the best known noise reduction product, which is Topaz. But there it is in Topaz. There it is in Lightroom. I, I don't really see a reason, honestly, to have both for that particular purpose. Again, Photo AI has other capabilities, enlargement and the sharpening. So again, not a true head-to-head. -head. I just wanted to point out and really kind of just talk about the fact that Lightroom has honestly just come so far. I mean, it kind of blows me away, like how good it is. And I'm glad that I've kind of embraced it again. I'm starting to incorporate it back into my editing because it's got powerful color control tools. It's got amazing masking. Now it's got AI-based noise reduction. And who knows what they're going to come out with next because they are Adobe. They're a large company with a lot of resources. I'm sure a lot of smart people. And the good news is 
companies like Topaz have pushed them to have to do more in order to kind of keep up. And, and I think they've done that and they've done it well. And not only have they kept up, but I think Adobe has in some cases exceeded some of the other products on the market. So just kind of a, I don't know, quick look, maybe it wasn't that quick, but I just kind of wanted to take a, a, a closer look, maybe that's the way to say it, a closer look at the noise reduction AI based here in Lightroom, because it's world class, it really is, it's fantastic. If you're interested in this, I can go take a noise reduction comparison between all the major tools, because I kind of got them all and I kind of use them all. And this isn't a, hey, this is better or that's better. This is really just me kind of posing the question is like, is it worth it to you to have an additional product or is it worth it just to do everything in one place? I kind of prefer the simplicity of doing things in one place. And so if I need to do massive amount of noise reduction and I'm gonna be editing here in Lightroom, I think I'll just do it in Lightroom versus go to Topaz in this case. So that was it, my friends. I just wanted to kind of catch up on noise reduction here in Lightroom and I'll be continuing to explore uh, all these amazing features that are in, in Lightroom now because there's a lot of them, like I said. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If there's certain Lightroom topics you want me to cover, I'd be happy to dive into them because I am using it more and more and I'm having a lot of fun. I mean, they're, they're kind of knocking it out of the park to be fair. So that's it for this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Comments and questions down below. I'll be back soon. You guys take care and until next time. Adios.